In the previous video, we built the frontend of our Spring Boot application using Bootstrap and Thymeleaf and enhanced the HTML tables using DataTables plugin. This application allows any user visiting our site to read or modify data. We don't want that. In this video, we will see how to secure our application by authenticating and authorizing users. Web security is a specialty on its own and it is a difficult skill to master. Thankfully, we don't need to master web security to secure our application. Spring Security takes care of it for us with the bare minimum of configurations. Spring Security is a powerful and highly customizable authentication and access control framework. Authentication and authorization might sound similar, but they are distinct security processes. Authentication is the process of verifying who a user is, while authorization is the process of verifying what the user has access to. For example, in our application, we can have two users, user 1 with admin privilege and user 2 with a normal user privilege. Though both are valid users who can log into our application, only the user with admin privilege should have access to modify the data and the normal user should only be able to view the data. To secure a Spring Boot application, all we need to do is to simply add the Spring Boot starter security dependency in the pom.xml. If a Spring Boot security dependency is added on the class path, form-based and HTTP basic authentications are enabled for all requests by default. Let's run this application to see what this dependency does to our application. In the server startup, you can notice that Spring's user details service auto configuration class has generated a security password. Try accessing your home page. It will redirect it to a login form page on slash login path automatically generated by Spring. That is Spring magic. To understand the default authentication settings, check out the configure method of web security configurer adapter class where any request by default requests authentication and both HTTP basic and form login are enabled by default. We'll get to that in a moment. If you want to log into your application from this auto generated login page, we can make use of the spring generated password we saw in the server startup logs and the username would be user. Now we are able to view our home page. To log out of this session, Spring Security provides a default path slash logout. If we navigate to that path using the browser, which will be a get request to the slash logout path, a default logout confirmation page is rendered with a logout button, which does a post request to the same slash logout path. After successful logout, Spring renders the logout success URL, which is by default slash login with a query string logout, which is used by the login HTML to display the message that the user has logged out successfully. In a real-world scenario, we don't want too much of the Spring Magic defaults. We would want more fine-grained control over what paths are restricted and who gets to access which resource. And more importantly, we would need more than one user and no generated security passwords. For all this, we need to create a configuration class that extends Web Security Configurer Adapter. Let's create a package named config. Inside that, we will create a security config class which extends Spring's Web Security Configurer Adapter and annotate it with enable web security annotation. This class will be used to override the default Spring security configurations according to our requirement. In this class, we need to override two configure methods, one with the parameter HTTP security and another with the parameter authentication manager builder. The default configuration for the configure HTTP security method would look like this. Every request needs to be authenticated. Both form login and HTTP basic authentication are enabled by default. Let's copy this to our overridden configure method. The other configure method has Authentication Manager Builder as its parameter. Authentication Manager Builder is used to create an Authentication Manager instance, which is the main Spring security interface for authenticating a user. You can use Authentication Manager Builder to build in-memory authentication, LDAP authentication, JDBC authentication, or you can even add your own custom authentication provider. Let's use the Authentication Manager Builder to build an in-memory authentication by adding two users, one user with username user and password as pass, with a role user, another user with username admin, password admin, and a role admin assigned to it. You can notice that I have added a string no op inside curly braces in front of the password. Hold out it for a little longer, we'll come back to it in a bit. Let's run the application. In the login form, provide the username as user and password as pass and we are able to log in successfully into the application. We can manually log out by hitting the slash logout path in the browser. Now going back to the special string we added before the password. To understand what the spring no op in curly braces does, let's remove it and run the application. Try to log in as user and nothing happens. Something has gone wrong. Let's check our application logs. 
we can see an illegal argument exception saying there is no password encoder map for id null the error tells us that the given password couldn't be decoded since no password encoder was configured for our in-memory authentication in spring security version 5 you can no longer store your passwords in plain text you have to provide a password encoder all password encoders implement the interface password encoder this interface defines the method encode to convert the plain password into the encoded form and the method matches to compare a plain password with the encoded password. Prior to Spring Security 5, the default password encoder was NOAA password encoder, which is not secure since it does no hashing. It is useful only for testing purposes where you prefer working with plain text passwords. In Spring Security 5, the default is delegating password encoder, which requires password storage format. Delegating password encoder delegates to another password encoder based upon a prefixed identifier. Apart from NOVA password encoder, there are other password encoders like Bcrypt password encoder, Scrypt password encoder, etc. that are provided by Spring Security. Delegating password encoder can look up the ID in the password storage format which is inside the curly braces and dedicate to the matching password encoder. In our case, we are working directly with plain text passwords since it is a demo application. Hence, we provided the ID as NOAP and delegating password encoder delegates to NOAP password encoder. We can write our own custom password encoder by implementing the password encoder interface. Bcrypt password encoder is the preferred implementation since it uses strong hashing function. Till now, we have been manually logging out by using the slash logout path in the browser. Let's add a logout button to accomplish that task. We are going to make use of Bootstrap's navbar to add a logout button on the top right corner and a logo on the top left corner. To add this navbar to all HTML pages in the application, we will create a separate header HTML template. I have already prepared the header HTML. Let's go over it one by one. You can see the Timeleaf TH namespace and Timeleaf Spring Security namespace sec in the HTML tag. Timeleaf Spring Security integration module provides Spring Security dialect which we can use to print the logged in user's credentials and to show different content to different roles. To use this module, we need to add the Timeleaf extra Spring Security 5 dependency in our pom.xml. The Spring Security dialect allows us to conditionally display content based on user roles, permissions, or other security expressions. It also gives us access to the Spring Authentication object. The sec authentication attribute is used to print the username and roles. Here we use the attribute sec authentication equal to name to print the username in the navbar which is placed inside the body of the HTML and is marked with bootstrap classes like navbar, navbar dar, fixer top, etc. To the left of the navbar, we are having a hyperlink to the home path with a logo image inside it and it is styled as a nav brand. We will place our logo PNG inside the resources static images. The image src would be images slash logo.png. To the right of the navbar, we'll add Bootstrap's single button dropdown with a single dropdown item, which is the logout button. The logout button on submit does a form post to the path slash logout, the default logout path. We define the navbar as a timely fragment using th fragment attribute. This is done to make this header navbar reusable, which can be added to any HTML page inside our application. We can insert this into any of the HTML templates inside a header tag using th insert attribute. Th insert attribute picks the header fragment from header HTML and inserts its contents inside the header tag. Let's insert this header fragment into all HTML templates where we would like the logout button. Run the application. We can see the dark navbar with a logo on the left and on the right we can see the text logged in as user which is a dropped out button. The navbar is added to all the pages where we inserted the fragment. Clicking on the logo takes us to the home page and clicking on the logout drop down button logs us out as expected. We have now seen how to authenticate users using in memory authentication. We will explore some of the other methods of authentication provided by Spring Security in the next video. But before that, let's explore authorization or access control. As discussed earlier, authorization is the process of determining which user has access to what. Spring Security has an architecture that is designed to separate authentication from authorization and has strategies and extension points for both. The main strategy interface for authentication is authentication manager and we configured our authentication in the configure method that takes in authentication manager builder. For fine-grained control of authorization, 
we can make use of configure method with parameter http security http security configurer allows configuring web based security for specific http requests by default it will be applied to all requests but can be restricted by using request matcher or other similar methods authorize request method allows restricting access based upon the http servlet request here we will use the and matchers method which will configure http security to be invoked only on the matching and style path pattern in our application i want to allow the operations like add delete edit to users who have the admin role only to do that i'll add the following and patterns as arguments to the and matches method and these paths like slash category slash add or slash question slash delete will be allowed only to your user who has a role admin and if a normal user tries to access these paths he will get an unauthorized error also i want the slash api paths to be publicly available that is even a non user should be able to access these apis since all requests have to be authenticated by default i'll add another and matcher with and pattern for all paths under slash api and do a permit all to these paths let's run the application we we'll log in as a user who has a role user navigate to the categories page and click on add new and we are getting 403 forbidden error which means that the user is not authorized to view this page this is because the path slash category slash add matches our first and matcher condition and hence it is blocked same is the case with edit and delete buttons and if we log in as admin user who has the role admin we are able to access the add page and also the edit page and delete button as well we can log out and check if the apis are publicly accessible as a non user we can see that the slash api paths do not ask for authentication and we are able to view it without logging in ideally a normal user should not even be able to view the add edit or delete buttons it should only be visible to an admin we can make use of timely spring security integration modules spring security dialect to show different content to different roles the sec authorize attribute renders its content when the attribute expression is evaluated to true we can place this attribute in the column tag where the edit and delete buttons are placed and use the expression has role admin so this column will be only shown to the user who has role admin do the same on the column header actions and also on the form tag which has the add new button run the application and log in as a normal user and we can see that none of add new edit or delete buttons are visible again log in as an admin and the add new button is visible and so is the actions column with edit and delete buttons we saw how to authenticate and authorize users using spring security and how to render ui elements based on the role of the user in the next video we'll see how to do authentication from a database rather than using in memory authentication and we'll also see how to create a custom login page instead of a default spring generated login page github link for this project is provided in the description below thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video